I, I have a quick question. So yeah. um, one of the things that I hear often is like, you know, COVID is not that bad. It's basically like the flu and I deal with that every year and it's not a big deal. Um, and I think it, it, I have a picture in my mind of what it looks like for someone to be hospitalized with COVID. And I know you were just sharing some information about, you know, being, um, being on a CPAP machine, potentially some people having to eat through feeding tubes. You were talking about steroids in your lungs or damage to the lungs because people have been there on those machines for so long. Um, are there are there other kind of pieces of that that you can share that will help us have a fuller picture of what it actually looks like for someone to go yeah. through that and get hospitalized? So the scary thing about COVID is it affects every organ system in the body. So a lot of people associate COVID with the lungs because it's a respiratory disease, but really the, uh, what COVID does in essence is hijack your entire body. And a lot of the proteins that COVID produces, not including the spike protein, but everything else in, that COVID produces can cause clotting. So for instance, I had a 24 year old patient who they were tested positive for COVID, spent 10 days at home trying to get better. And because they were not really moving around, they ended up having a uh, blood clot in their lung, which we call a, a PE pulmonary embolism. And they had to go to the uh, hospital 12 days after they tested positive uh, to try and take anticoagulants to clear that blood clot. So a lot of the patients who have COVID are at higher risk of blood clotting. Uh, they have shortness of breath, which we've been talking about a lot. And a lot of the that time, um, patients are really delaying their care because they think they can, it will get better at home. Um, but really patients are just gasping for air to the point where they can't eat. They can't really do anything because they're so tired from gasping for air. That's a lot of things we see. We also see the neurological things. So with the increased risk of getting clots, people can have strokes. And we've seen that in a lot of younger patients, specifically 35, 40, and even 50 year olds, which isn't normal. And these are all people who are healthy, by the way without any uh, comorbidities or other medications at home. We're also seeing from the neurological standpoint, people having uh, confusion, uh, fatigue, having uh, brain fog, which is something uh, that's really affected people's ability to be productive at work. Uh, one thing I've also seen is with the taste and smell, usually people have that for a prolonged period of time. So. Uh, it can be anywhere from seven days to 14 days. But if your job depends on your taste and smell, like being a baker, being a chef, working at a restaurant or anything like that, sometimes your taste and smell might not come back for months. So I've heard stories about that where COVID affects people who might not have severe symptoms, but cannot get their taste or smell back within months. And also when they do get their taste and smell back, it's not the same. So one specific story is, uh, there was a baker who she has a whole bakery in Napa and she asked, she got COVID and incidentally what happened was her taste and smell was lost at the beginning like everybody else would typically have but it didn't come back for months so she couldn't even taste her own uh, cooking her own baking and, and as a baker that's you know that's your livelihood impacted by COVID. So we're seeing anywhere from those mild symptoms to more severe symptoms under neurological wise. Yeah. So COVID does affect all the organ systems. It's not just respiratory. It's every organ that you can think of, even, you know, liver, kidney, all those things. I would also say that the impact goes much further. So you have, uh, when if someone is positive with COVID, you know, and they're not vaccinated, they're much uh, easier at spreading COVID-19. So they'll spread it to their families. And a lot of the families in Stockton, we know are multi-generational. So that's something that maybe you can bring up to the people that you talk to. If you live with, you know, someone mentioned they have a kid who's going to school and they were worried about getting the vaccine and that causing someone to get sick. Well, the actual honest truth is that because they didn't get the vaccine, they might bring home COVID from work to their family. And then you have that person's parents getting infected and also their kids getting infected. And if they're going to school, uh, maybe they might be a spreader of COVID-19. So there's a lot of different impacts and a lot of different ways that COVID presents itself. 
And then you have to think about it from the um, from the point of view of someone who's a working parent, you know, if they have COVID, they can't go to work for many days. And that's a loss of income for most people who might not be living in the best situation. And also from a hospitalization point of view, it costs a lot to hospitalize a COVID patient. Um, main, what I've seen is for the ICU patients specifically about 30,000 to 70,000 per stay. And that's anywhere from a few days to, to many weeks. And it just depends on that. So there's the financial aspect, the uh, physical and health aspect, and also the social aspect where you can't go to work or uh, you might spread it at school or things like that. 